Hello there. In all my years as a therapist and a coach, one of the things that people bring to me often is how they can have the important conversations with people, the conversations about things that maybe something's bothering them and they, they want to resolve it, or perhaps they're worried about somebody and they want to talk to them about their concerns, but they just don't know how to have these sensitive conversations because to date, as they've been trying to do that, they just they haven't been able to do it in such a way that it actually has a positive outcome. They just end up maybe having a row or just going around in circles or they don't feel heard. And it's very difficult to have these conversations, often because there's something at risk. You know, it could be at work, so you're worried about your job, or it could be with a family member or somebody close to you that you're worried about upsetting the relationship, possibly even losing the relationship. So there's this sort of tricky, risky feeling that happens, and, and we end up trying to sort of second guess what we should say and how to say it. But I found that there are many different communication skills that we can use that make a huge difference. And uh, over the a number of videos, I'm going to be sharing a lot of those with you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about five really helpful communication techniques. The first one is when you're going to have a conversation with somebody, imagine hearing yourself saying it, imagine being in their shoes, imagine what they might think when they hear what you want to say, and imagine what they might feel in their heart when they hear what you want to say. You see, all too often what happens is that we're so concerned with what we want to say, and getting our point across, that we kind of forget what it might like to be on the receiving end of that message. And when we think about that, when we think about being on the receiving end of that message, it's really helpful because it, it kind of gives us a, a few clues as to how we might adjust our, our message, the words that we might use that might be a bit softer, a bit kinder, or a bit firmer even. And actually, things like our tone of voice as well, having a calmer tone of voice, and maybe things like looking at that person in the eye rather than just having a kind of offhand comment as we're walking walking away. You know, these things, when we imagine being on the receiving end of that, it really can give us a lot of clues as to how we can make adjustments and how we can really consider that person and, and what that will be like. Because if we put ourselves in their shoes and make it the best way of receiving a message, well, then they're going to receive the message in the best way. And they're more likely to hear you and more likely to be open to whatever it is that you, that you want to have a conversation about. The other thing to think about is what is the method that is best for the thing that you want to have the conversation about with somebody? Is it a quick text message? Is it a quick, quick DM? Is that fine? Or does it require something more in depth, like an email or sitting down in person? So for example, if you were to send a message to somebody saying, why don't you come and visit me? It could be taken as, why don't you come and visit me? I'd love to see you. Or it could be taken as, why, do, why haven't you been to visit me for ages? What's the problem? You know, so it, it very much depends on what is the depth of the message that you want to actually have in that conversation with somebody. And thinking again, coming back to thinking about how that might be received. Sometimes a quick, you know, direct message is, is fine. Often it's not. Sometimes it could be an email, which is you know, getting a little bit deeper with somebody or sitting down with them and talking with them in person. So it's a, it's a really good idea to think what is best because do you want to avoid having a, a sort of miscommunication because they've read a, a text message the wrong way? Would it be better to actually sit down and talk to them in person? One thing I always say is when you're going to send a message to somebody or you're going to have a conversation with somebody, of course, you're going to think that through in your mind first. 
and what do I want to say to this people, to this person? But actually, once you've decided whether you're sending them a message, an email, or you're sitting down to talk, talk with them, give yourself time. That's the third tip here. Give yourself time to let that message settle in your mind first. So don't go rushing unless it's absolutely necessary. Don't go rushing to have that conversation with them in whatever form straight away. Decide what you want to say and then give yourself 24 hours if you can. Because in that period of time, you'll process that. You'll, you'll begin to get the energy of it. You'll begin to get the feeling of it, how it might be received, how you might feel in that conversation. And that will give you time again to really think about, is that what I really want to say? Is there something else I'd like to add to that? Just, you know, allow it to settle. My fourth tip is actually prepare people when you want to have a sensitive conversation with them. Don't just, you know, we, we, we can kind of get into this thing where we, we, we know what we want to say and we, we, we just sort of jump at it. Um, and, you know, we, we might be with somebody and we might say, and, and now I want to talk to you about that. And, and this poor person on the, on the other end of the conversation, maybe they have no idea about what's been going on in your head and they're not prepared. They're, they're not ready to have this conversation. So they're not going to react very well to it. They might sort of walk away or reject you in some way, reject the conversation or get sort of defensive. So it's a really good idea, if, if at all possible, is to be able to say to this person, you know what, I'd really like to talk to you about something or the thing itself or there's something on my mind or something. I'd love to have a conversation with you. When are you free for us to sit down and have a chat? That is so helpful to be able to do that because it gives the other person the opportunity to sort of be aware that there's something coming up that is maybe a more sensitive conversation and so that they'll feel calmer. Make sure you do it in a way that you're not scaring them. You know, make sure that you say to them, it's just something I want to talk over. And I thought rather than rushing at it, it'd be nice if we could sit down and have a cup of coffee or something or go for a walk or something and have a chat about it. it Maybe something that keeps coming up and it's an issue between you and they're aware of it, but you can still prepare them and say, you know, that thing, you know, shall we, shall we arrange a time to sit down and, or, or, or talk about it together in some way? You know, is there, is there a time when you're free, maybe after work or at the weekend or something? So that again, you're not kind of rushing at this person it's respectful to do that. And again, it gives you time as well to be thinking about that. And it honors the relationship that you have with that person. The fact that you're both agreeing to sit down and give each other that space and that time. And the last tip is about seeing things from somebody's in their world and actually letting them know that. Because quite often what we do in communication is we get caught up in this thing about, oh, if only you'd see it my way, everything would be all right. If only you'd change. If only you'd change your perspective. Why can't you see it my way? And of course, they can't because they're not you. You're you and they're them. And you're both, you both have equally valid experiences of the world. If you can let a person know that you completely get that their experience of the world and this situation is different from your experience. You may say you don't agree with their experience, but you actually honor and respect the fact that they do have their experience. That can work wonders in a conversation because what you're doing then is you're not blaming each other. You're not blaming that person and telling them they have to be different, which goes against everything that they think and feel. You're just saying, let's look at both our experiences here. Acknowledge that we both have our own personal ex experiences. That's perfectly fine. And actually, let's see if we can find some compromise. Quite often when people do actually acknowledge each other's experiences, they find a way. They find a way to 
resolve an issue or to work through or to navigate through an issue in some way because there's no resistance anymore. Nobody's being told that they're wrong. So those are five tips. So let me run through them again. First one, put yourself in their shoes. Imagine what it's like to be hearing it, the, the thing that you want to say. What might go through their head? What might their heart, their tender heart feel? And when, by doing that, you give yourself an opportunity to think about how you put that message across. The next one is to think about what is the best method for this particular message? Is it better that I send it in a text message or a, a DM? Or would it be better if I put it in an email? Or would it be better if I put it in, spoke to them in person? Because then you don't have messages that get misconstrued. The next one is to give yourself time to process. So when you've decided that what you want to say to somebody, give yourself 24 hours if you can, so that you can let it settle in your mind and you can think about anything you might want to add or take away or change in that message. Because once we've said something, we can't tend to take it back, can we? Not really. So it's a good idea to sort of rehearse it and give yourself time. And the fourth one was remember to prepare people if you want to have a sensitive conversation with them. Let them know and kind of book a time with them. And that makes a, a big, big difference. And then the last one is to remember to let them know that even though you may not agree with each other, you do respect the fact that they have a right to have their own experiences and to be able to see things from the, their own viewpoint. So those are my five tips, my communication tips for this video. And I'll be making more communication videos coming up. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think about these tips and your general experiences of having those difficult, sensitive, tricky conversations with people where you get stuck and what you find helps and how you think you might apply these tips. If you like this video, do hit the thumbs up like button because that means that more people get to see the video and that way you're helping me to help more people, help our world become a, a better place where people are feeling more confident in themselves and having happier relationships. And share the video if you'd like to. Also do subscribe because that way you'll know when I've got more videos coming up. Bye-bye for now.